Two weeks ago, we had the celebration of the birth of Jesus, the physical birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. And last Sunday, we had the recognition um, by the Gentile world of the birth of Jesus. The baptism is, in another way, a birth. Jesus has been growing up and leaving home, and he comes to the Jordan to be baptized. Baptism in the Jewish tradition was uh, a, a cleansing. In, in the Jewish tradition, they call it mikvah. Mikvah. They, it's a it's a purification time. It's reminiscent for them of. Uh, Israel coming out of the dirtiness or the, the alienation that was Egypt and going through the waters of the Red Sea and being cleansed and identified as the people of God. So Jesus, as a faithful Jew, goes into the waters of rededication, of baptism, which... A, a Jewish person might do that every week, every two weeks, depending. And, and they get re-identified as the people of God, God's holy people. Jesus comes out, goes in as a faithful Jewish person, and comes out receiving a new name. You are the one, my son, in whom I am well pleased. That's all we hear in the gospel. That there is an, a birth, an annunciation, a proclamation, a, an incarnation. Jesus coming in to being born in, in a sense, into adulthood. Mark doesn't have a, nativ a nativity narrative. He has the birth of Jesus going public, if you will. And, and so we, Jesus, we don't hear it, but in Mark's gospel, if you want to read in the first chapter, he goes out into the desert for 40 days, very similar of the Jewish people going out, being lost in a way, wandering for 40 years in the desert for purification and identification and temptation. And Jesus goes out for 40 days. We don't hear this in today's gospel, but it's very important because he goes out there and is tempted like the Jews were. <clears throat> and he's living with the beasts and uh, the wildness of life. And what he's doing there is reflecting on, I am the beloved and the Father is well pleased in me. So he's hearing that voice, but, and this is what I want to share uh, today, it's, it's about the word discernment. There, there is much about how to do things and what to do. And the question in discernment is, why should I do this? What spirits are moving within me. And, and some people just live very instinct, instinctually. They, they just do this, do that. No reflection. We are baptized as Christians and as Catholics in the Spirit. And the Spirit of God urges. We'll talk a little later about what does God urge us to. But we are also born into uh, a spirit that is of the flesh, of our bodies, of our egos. And if you want to be of the spirit, you're also going to have to wrestle, as Jesus did, with the beasts and the dryness in the desert. That's too bad, but that's the way it is. Because the voices are always there. And when I pray with this, Jesus prays for 40 days, as the Israelites did. Are we the people of God? Am I the beloved of the Father? 
What does that mean? Because I hear other voices. I hear the voices of my humanity, Jesus says. Do I really believe that I am the beloved of the Father and he's well pleased in me? Who I am, not what I have done. It's not approval. It's love. Now for us, we, if, you, if you are going to be of discerning, you're, you've, you've got to go out into your own deserts. Too bad. But you have to go off by yourself. And, you know, there's so many programs, uh, radio and television programs and, and um, YouTube about how to do things and what to do in this situation. There's, there's lots of going outside me to find out what I from inside should do. I understand that. How to fix a wash machine, you look up YouTube, uh, how to do banking, all this stuff. But the more inside you it is to do, it's going to cause you conflict. I'm sorry about that, but why am I doing this? I'm being urged to do this, but I feel the urge to do that. Or the movement, or the voice. It's, there's a conflict. And you say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'll just do whatever I want. You were baptized into the conflict with the spirit that is in conflict with the other forces of you, your ego and your, your senses. This is tough stuff. It's easier to look up YouTube. There is no God tube. There's a me tube and I have to listen to me. Now, why would I do this? What is of the Spirit? The Spirit gives flesh. The Spirit works Christ's uh, grace in me to, to do something. But I'm in conflict. Should I do this or that? What's of the Spirit? And, I, so, and, and what the evil spirit loves to do is not to have us do something bad, but to do nothing at all. Nice get you into uh, a paralysis. I don't know why I would do this, why I would do it. I'm not going to do anything. The work of the Spirit and the ultimate work of discernment is do something good. Do something that is of you. Not asking what would Jesus do now, but what would Jesus move me to do because of me in whom the Father is well pleased. I've been baptized into Christ's being pleased by the Father. You and I are pleased by the Father. What does a pleased person do? Do something good. I can't tell you what that is. To eat this, eat that, I, I don't know. To call that person, call that person. To call that person, not that person. There's all these conflicts. And the evil one would like to get us into what they call abulia, I, do, I don't know what to do. No, find out what would a, a person do who is pleased by God. That wouldn't, that wouldn't mean, what will I do that is most successful for my ego? I've got to check that out. And that takes quiet. So Jesus went out into the desert for 40 days to, to test the spirits, to to listen to his humanity and to his divinity. And we have that. We were baptized into his divinity. We say that at Mass. We pour the water into the wine and we say, you humbled yourself to share in our humanity that we might share in your divinity now, not just in heaven, but we are shares in the spirit, the, the divine love of God. So they're in conflict. I'm sorry about that. I, am, I have to face it myself. Should I do that? Should I? Why? Why would I do this? Why wouldn't I do that? And of course, what the Spirit is going to face me with is my selfishness. I want to run away from my desert. I want to run away from anything that is conflictual in me. You are in conflict all the time. Whether you should be this way or that way, wear this or that, eat this or that, 
not eat this, not it's a yes or no all the time. And and there is a comfort in the baptism of Jesus that he was baptized into being public. And and if you right after the baptism and right after he comes back after being tempted for 40 days, what does he do? He starts doing good things, healing this person, meeting that person, calling these people. He's out doing good. That's what Jesus would do now. That's what you and I do now. Let's do something good coming from our, our wrestling, if you will. That's what it is. But it's, it's, it's a peaceful thing. It shouldn't be neurotic or um, perfectionistic. We're just human beings. As best we can, am I doing this because I am a baptized person who is beloved by God? What do I want to do then? I've received the Eucharist. I have received the sacraments. Meant not just for me, but all those sacraments are for me to do something good. Like Jesus did. Right after his baptism, his cleansing, his being announced as the public presence of God, so are you, so am I. So, at the end of Mass, we say, go and do something good. Go and, go and be the Mass. The Mass doesn't end. The Mass continues in the way you and I live as beloved of God. <laughs>